every Formula One fan has their favourite car or livery. Maybe it reminds you of your childhood or it's well designed, makes sense and is simply a well put together combination of colours and advertising. Many of the Ferraris from the 90s or early 2000s are a fan favourite because you can't go wrong with that iconic red and the pure sense that it makes. Cars like the Renault R26 have made an impact in the sport for being unique. The combination of blue and yellow in theory shouldn't look good, right? Well, this particular car is absolutely a fan favourite. The bright blue and yellow together contrast so well and is positioned in a way that makes it flow and just look nice. Now, what about a car with no sponsors at all? A car that doesn't even have a livery which matches the manufacturer's colours. This here is the 2007 Honda RA107, also known as the Earth Car. You either love it or you hate it. The car was originally unveiled on the 25th of February 2007 at the Circuit de Catalunya and was all black. The next day, Honda unveiled a car with no sponsors, but had an image of the planet Earth against a black background that represented space. This livery had a purpose. Honda wanted to send a message to the world in their own words by saying, to help raise awareness of the environmental issues facing the planet, the RA107 F1 car will simply feature a huge image of Earth in place of the advertising and sponsor logos which have featured and dominated all other F1 cars for decades. It was definitely surprising and unique since we have been so used to seeing Formula 1 cars plastered with sponsorships and advertising for so long. The only logos on the car was the Type R branding and small Bridgestone logos just by the front wing. Honda further said, the car's new look is a powerful call to action for fans, sponsors, customers, and members of the public to join Honda's commitment to help address the environmental issues facing the world. Honda also set up a website called My Earth Dreams where people could go and make a pledge to change their lifestyle in a way to help the environment and also donate to an environmental charity in exchange to having your name on the car which would make up the Earth livery. Despite Honda's seven DNFs in 2006, they still managed to finish fourth in the constructor's standings with 86 points. So when Honda unveiled the Earth car in 2007, they had high expectations for the season. But unfortunately, the Earth car had other plans. The team were lacking pace from the get-go, qualifying behind Super Aguri in Melbourne, who were pretty much using an upgraded version of Honda's 2006 car. The car would improve, but only scored three points finishes thanks to Jensen Button, with the Chinese Grand Prix being a standout race, finishing P5 in pretty tough conditions. From some angles, the car looks great, and depending on the lighting at the time, the Earth contrasted with the space area of the livery really nicely. Honda were expecting more in 2007, so changes were made in 2008 before the big regulation change of 2009. The Honda RA108 was on track for the first time in Valencia on the 23rd of January 2008, but this time it was completely white. The livery was unveiled at the team's HQ in Brackley, which stuck with the Earth Dreams concept but had some changes made to it. The base color was white, with the earth section being on the side of the car, as well as the racing stripes and text having an earth fill, as if the entire earth was behind that white base. The car also featured some fluoro highlights. Ross Braun was also team principal now and was optimistic about the upcoming season, saying, the RA108 is a wholly different concept to its predecessors in terms of its aerodynamic layout and mechanical structure. The design philosophy has been developed to allow greater scope for aerodynamic packaging and exploitation, particularly to facilitate the introduction of performance upgrades through the season. This was the car that was Honda's response to the challenges they faced in 2007. Despite winning an environmental award, the Drivers and Constructors Championship was the big mountain Honda wanted to climb. The team did manage points finishes on four occasions, one of them being a podium at Silverstone, but they simply lacked consistent pace, finishing ninth in the Constructors standings. Honda began to focus on the 2009 season about halfway through 2008 where they felt like they had the chance to get the jump on everyone else with such a substantial regulation change on the horizon. Enter the 2008 global financial crisis. Honda suddenly pulled out of the sport but continued to work on the 2009 car while they attempted to find a buyer for the team. There was plenty of interest but the team was eventually sold to team principal Ross Braun for just one single pound. The rest is history. Braun went on to win the 2009 
2009 World Championship in one of the sport's best Phoenix from the Ashes stories of all time. Whether you like these cars or not, the Honda Earth Dreams liveries definitely stood out and had everybody's full attention. It was the total opposite of your typical F1 car covered in sponsors and advertising. It was simple, sometimes ugly, but had a clear message on what is motorsport's biggest stage. If we look at when this took place, 2007 and 2008, and now look at Formula 1's active plan on sustainability and net zero carbon, Honda were the first that I remember to actually take a stance on it. Now I know people will say that it's hypocritical to make an Earth F1 car only to fill it with fuel and race around a track many times a year, but the Earth Dreams concept was a call out to all engineers in Formula 1 to work together and use the innovation which Formula 1 was built on to find practical solutions for the benefit of the planet. These cars will always be remembered, even if you hate them for whatever reason. Maybe you just think they're ugly as hell, and hey, I wouldn't blame you. The Earth car is why I love this sport, not just because of the livery, but because of the nostalgic throwback I have to my childhood. Wondering what exactly was that livery? Why doesn't it have any sponsors? And why do I kind of like it? It's the reason I look forward to car launches every season. Some teams, sure, you know what you're gonna get. Ferrari, red car. Red Bull, the branding of Red Bull. McLaren, orange. But I still have that feeling of uncertainty while I watch every car launch live, wondering if maybe, just maybe, when that sheet comes off the car, we're in for a surprise, just like Earth Dreams. Thank you.